Now, in this video, we're going to not actually work with data, but we're going to plot a distribution, uh, a theoretical distribution. And to do that, we're going to look at uh, the probability distribution plot option. Now, there are different options that you can use, and we're going to go through um, each of these in turn. We can look at a single probability distribution. We can look at a probability distribution where we vary the parameters of that distribution. We can look at two distributions together, and then we can use this to like show a graph where the probability is being shaded under the curve. So let's start with a single view case. And usually, um, you get a lot of these graphs with normal distributions. The standard normal distribution, for instance, would be zero and one. And I'm going to go ahead and just plot that default normal probability distribution. Um, it looks like your bell curve. So you can do this with other kinds of graphs, so other kinds of distributions. So if we choose one of these other ones, we can also plot different probability distribution, the chi-squared, exponential, um, the F distribution, gamma, geometric, lots of different options here. You will have to choose different parameters depending on what graph, what, what distribution type that you choose. So for instance, if I choose binomial, I have to choose the number of trials and the event probability, let's say I want to flip an unfair coin 15 times where the probability of heads is 60%. And it will, this is a discrete variable, so it gives me a histogram type graph instead of a smooth curve. Um, if you have a continuous distribution, you'll get a smooth curve. If you are looking at a discrete variable, then it will give you the um, histogram type graph. Now, if we go then and we try one of our other options, say varying parameters, um, we can also select multiple graph options. Um, if we're creating multiple graphs, we can plot them on the same graph, in separate graphs, um, or on separate panels of the same graph. And we can select, again, we can adjust these means and standard deviations. Um, I would like to look at a Poisson distribution. Let's say the mean is uh, 18. So this is, a, again, Poisson is a discrete distribution. If um, we select two distributions, then they're going to give us options to do both of these. Sort of a common comparison that you will see in different graphs is the T distribution versus the normal distribution. Uh, I've set my T distribution here to be five degrees of freedom so that there is a distinct difference between the normal distribution and then the standard normal distribution as an option. And you can see that for the T distribution, this dotted line, it has a lower peak but it has larger tails, but they're otherwise quite similar in shape. And the last type of probability distribution plot I'm gonna show you is the view probability option. And again, in this area, you can choose um, which type of distribution to uh, display, what the parameters for that distribution are, and you have uh, different options here in terms of uh, how you're going to display this. So you're looking at probability in the right tail, in the left tail, in both tails, or in between two probabilities, which you can specify. Now, uh, for when you're doing hypothesis tests or confidence intervals in particular, both tails is a very common thing to want. Um, you can also change this to an X value so that it will ask for your uh, X boundaries instead of being in, if you've specified your distribution here to have a mean of other than zero and a standard deviation of other than one, then you can specify the X values that you want. So I'm gonna just leave it as probability. And when you hit okay, you can see that 
it's shaded the values in both tails. And both the probabilities add up to 5% as opposed to being individually at 5%. And of course it's labored, labeled the boundaries uh, for the standard normal distribution. Uh, if we were to adjust this um, similar graph, but for the T distribution, let's say five degrees of freedom again, and I'm going to do the both tails again. You can see that the cutoff values for the T distribution are significantly larger than the T distribution, uh, than the normal distribution cutoff values to get that same percentage. And so that's why when you have very small sample sizes, your confidence intervals are much wider because you have more variability in small sample sizes.